Today I have a one layer watercolor card to share with you. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another session of creative coloring with Iram. I'm Iram Tasneem and I have another watercolor card to share with you today. But this time around, the watercoloring is slightly involved. Not too much, so don't be scared. I will share a few tips for creating a beautiful watercolor panel. I will use the Nostalgic Florals stamp set and I have the A2 watercolor card stock by Altenew here with me. I will use the stamp conditioning eraser and go over the stamp so that it holds on to the ink better. I have a fairly good idea of how I want to position my stamps and uh, they are going to be on the right hand side and I will stamp them in a way that I fill the right side area without requiring masking. So once I have all the bigger images on there, I will use a smaller stamping block to stamp some leaves off the edge partially or however they fit into my design. For those of you who find it easy to watercolor heat embossed images, you can use clear embossing powder over the obsidian ink and heat set. I'm not doing that, but it is an option. Now to create my red watercolor, I used red cosmos for the base from the artist watercolor 24 pan set. But I also added cherry blossom, rock collection and warm and cozy watercolors to this. To tone down the orange hue from the warm and cozy, I added starry night watercolor too. I wanted a really muted red color so I don't end up with a Christmas like palette. I will apply this concentrated watercolor directly onto the petal next to the flower center and along the line where I want to show depth. Then I will use another brush to activate the pigment. This brush is wet, it has clean water. I will use this brush to spread the pigment through the tips of the petal. I will use the brush with the pigment and add watercolor to the divots or bends on the petals here and here and soften it so that it doesn't look blunt. There is still some water on the petal to help me soften and blend this. If at any point you think there is a lot of pigment, you can clean the brush and remove excess water from it and pick up the pigment and water from the petal. You will need to have the brush on its side and gently swipe the brush like you are scooping up something. And you will notice that I get rid of the excess pigment and immediately create a bit of highlight uh, wherever I do this. I'm going to color all the petals in the same way. This will be the first layer of the petals. Once you apply the concentrated pigment, try to soften it right away so that the pigment doesn't settle and dye the cardstock. If you have trouble with the light source, then use the overlapping petals to add shadows. Find the petal that is uh, the furthest behind and see how it is placed. Most of the time that petal will be the darkest. Then also keep in mind the petal that is on the topmost as that one will have the most highlight. Also notice petals that are protruding outwards or have a different bend, fold or curl to them. Those are the types of petals that you can color differently or add shading to. Take your time to add shading to these divots. This is what took me the longest to color but taking your time to and softening these will really add to the look of the flower. Now the petal looks like it's not flat and has some curl to it. You can easily do this by adding pigment and softening it with a clean brush and picking up excess pigment from the area adjacent to it to show highlights. For areas where I want to show intense shadows, I will mix more of the rock collection pigment to the existing color that I have on my palette and add that to the nukes. I will then soften this pigment with the existing pigment just like I have been softening the other areas with a cl clean brush or a diluted pigment. Remember that you can always go back in to add more color and darker shadows once you have your first layer. 
Normally, I share tutorials where I am in my carefree mode, dropping in pigment here and there and just playing around. This is not that sort of coloring. This is a pretty watercolor piece that we will color today. We will try our best to stay within the lines. It's quite therapeutic and you can watch a movie or a TV show or listen to a podcast while coloring something like this. I actually worked on this panel during one of Bridget Casey's Saturday workshops. So it was really nice listening to ladies chat and discuss their projects while I was coloring on my panel and recording the process. So now that my flowers are done and all flowers were colored in the same manner, I will move on to the leaves. For my leaves, I decided to go with cooler greens and for this, I used green meadows mixed with starry night watercolor. I will apply the mixture onto the leaf right to the base where it connects to the stem and along the midrib. I will also add the pigment along the edge. Then I will use the clean wet brush to move the pigment. I will add more pigment if I think there is a need but I am going to try to keep the curved portion of the leaf lighter the portions on either side of the midrib that is just as i did with the petals in this way there will be a highlight created on the leaf automatically without much effort now i do this quite often i don't know if you have noticed this uh, before i add the color of the flower onto the leaves so to some of the leaves i will add a bit of red i will add this to the lighter portions so that it shows through and i won't do do this to all the leaves but just some of them if you want you can skip this step it but it adds an interesting look to the leaves and also balances the image for the flower center i kept uh, this simple because it's such a uh, small area i added a base layer of fall harvest and then added a darker pigment of Delectable Delights. You can also go with yellows and oranges if uh, that is what you want, but I was uh, going for um, some muted tones. If you want to add more depth, you can also add coffee break pigment. I normally color my background, so this time too, I will add color to the uh, background to ground the image. But if you want to stop here, you definitely can. I will mix a rock collection pigment with a bit of red on my uh, palette to create a gray with a red undertone. I will first add a light color wash of this to the panel, mainly concentrating on the right hand side portion and diffusing the watercolor as I move uh, to the left. When I move to the left, I I will add more water to my brush. I also switched my brush to one of Altenew's brown brushes. You can pick any size uh, of brush that you are comfortable with. Uh, this will help me diffuse the pigment better and also hold uh, more water. Because I need more water uh, to add to this area as I need a diluted pigment uh, on this portion. The left side that is. Next, I will dab this brush with more pigment from the palette to create texture on the right side of the panel so that it doesn't look plain or with a satin finish. Dabbing the brush will create an instant texture. I will then dry the panel with the heat tool or you can also leave it to air dry. Next, I will add a bit of a jet black ink spray pigment onto my watercolor pan here and add splatters of that to the panel. I find it easier to use the ink spray to add splatters this way. Even if it dries, it stays on the pan. I can activate it again with water or with the ink spray should I need it again. I only use this pan to add splatters anyway. I used a fine liner pen to go over the outline again just to darken it and fill in the stamens and that really made the image pop. I hope you liked the card and will share your watercolor projects with Altenew and me. Next week, I have another watercolor tutorial coming up, which is more involved only because of the shape of the flower, but it's essentially the same thing. 
Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Bye. Hello there. Did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Alter New YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.